this is the third time I've tried to film this video. I have had camera problems, I have had tripod problems, I have had ring light problems. That is why this is not lit. I probably should have, but I forgot. And we've got a lot of natural light coming in, so I think it's gonna be okay. So now we're filming on my vlog camera and probably going to be doing this for the foreseeable future. It's fine, it's a great quality video. It just takes up a lot more space. Hi y'all and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Oh man, it's been over a month since we've said that because we had a different intro for Vlogmas, but we're back. We're back to your regularly scheduled programming with a new schedule that I'm gonna touch on a little bit when we get into the bullet journal. But first, I just wanted to say hello, happy new year. This is the first time that I'm seeing you, talking to you on YouTube in a couple of weeks, I think, a uh, week and a half, two weeks, something like that. I took some time off to reset, to try and get my sleep schedule in order because it is quite out of whack, although it is just about back to where it should be. And also took some time to get my bullet journal together so that I could get my life together for the new year. And now that I've done that, I'm going to share with you guys my 2021 bullet journal. And as y'all know, and as the title of this video says, I do a digital bullet journal. And I don't really see a lot of digital bullet journal videos, but digitally bullet journaling is honestly my favorite. There are so many things that are a lot easier with a digital bullet journal. Now, of course, there are some drawbacks that you can't really do with a digital, but, but for the most part, you can do amazing things with it. And some things are a lot, lot easier with the digital bullet journal. I will go into that a little bit while we're doing a little flip through of my journal. This is a very minimal bullet journal setup. I like to be very minimalist and just do a black and white setups because I really don't need any of the, the fancy stuff. I've done that in the past and it's amazing and it looks really awesome, but I don't feel the need to take that time because my bullet journal is just that. It is for me to plan my life and keep my life together. It is not for me to look pretty and do art in. That's why I have Procreate. That's why I have art supplies. I don't really do that the artsy thing in my bullet journal anymore. That being said, this is my fourth year doing a bullet journal and I've done it digitally all four years. So if you guys would like me to go back and do a flip through of some of my older bullet journals so you can see the more artsy digital spreads, I can definitely do that. I'm still using the same app that I've been using for all four years now, Good Note. Not sponsored, but it's basically unlimited journals for the price of one journal. I absolutely love this app. I've been using it for so long. So if you're looking for a good journaling app, that's the one that I recommend. But before we get into that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me. And drop a like on this video if you are into planning and bullet journals and all of that, which I'm sure you are because you are here with me today. And with that, I think that we should go ahead, get into the flip through of this bullet journal. Without further ado, let's get into it. So in 2020, I got this iPad Pro with a pencil. This is the first time I've ever had the pencil and it did make my bullet journaling process so much easier this year, but I have been digitally bullet journaling for four years, like I said, and I had just an iPad mini and a stylus and I made it work. So I'm still using the same journal that I've been using for years, and that is GoodNote. Since we're already a few days into 2020 and I've already been using my bullet journal, I just made a copy of my bullet journal and erased the personal information that I don't want to give out on the internet. So I'm going to click on the copy and I'm not going to draw all the spreads with you. Like I said, I've already been using my bullet journal, so all the spreads are already drawn, but I am going to go through each spread that I did for 2021. So let's get into it. My title page is just really simple. Like I said, this is a minimalist bullet journal. All of my spreads are really simple, black and white. And the quote I have this year on this title page is please be kind to us because 2020 was not kind to us and I am hoping that 2021 will be. Well, there are so many things I'm grateful that happened in 2020 with me, with work and friendships that I built. I am looking forward to hopefully 2021 offering us a little bit more kindness than 2020 did. And also a reminder to be kind to other people because 
everybody has been going through their own shit through 2020 and now that it's a new year that doesn't change the fact that everyone went through some shitty times so be kind for my second page this is one of the reasons i absolutely love digitally bullet journaling this page and the next page are legit copy paste from last year's bullet journal because i'm using the exact same page size my graph and my key I could just copy over. So both of these were made with just an iPad mini and a stylus and I was able to take them from that bullet journal and then copy them right over into this bullet journal without having to redraw them or anything like that, which I think is really awesome. It is one of the reasons I love digitally bullet journaling. For my next page, I have my doctor's appointment log. This is so that I can keep track of when was the last time I saw each type of doctor, what their name is so I can easily make appointments with them in the future and when my last appointment was, when my next appointment is, so that I can make sure I'm keeping up with the annual things like the physical and the dentist cleanings and all of that kind of stuff. And then any follow-up appointments that I may have with those certain doctors to go over anything more in particular. This chart is so helpful and it's something that I do not see in very many bullet journals, but if you do not have a doctor's appointment log, you should. It's so helpful to keep up with your doctor's appointments. My next log is my income log and my bills. So because I am now full-time content, I, my income is going to be coming from a bunch of different sources. And for tax purposes and for just keeping everything organized, I have an income log for what sources and the amount that I earn from that source. And then my bills, where the bills are going, the amount and how much and when they're due each month. So I've already started filling this out. I just erased that personal information to show you guys the chart. And then down here, I started writing just an income sources list just so I can see in like an easy list how many different sources I have income coming from because it is quite a lot to keep up with. Not that I'm even making enough yet to really fully live off of this, but I am trying and so it's just gonna take time for me to, to get there and hopefully now that Vlogmas is over and this is my first month as full-time content, we can actually raise that a little bit more. And speaking of content, the next page is my content calendar. So I have monthly and weekly. Under monthly, just like everything that I do for my patrons, everything I have to schedule every month. And then this is a little sneak peek to something coming in the future. We are working on my web website. And once we get that up, we'll have recipes, little vegan product reviews, and lots of food pictures and blog posts, that kind of thing. So it will be one place to go for all of my recipes, which I'm super excited about. Under weekly, I have it broken up the days of the week and then different social media sources. Now, these are not all of the places that I post on, but they are my main platform. So YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, and my two Instagrams. Tuesday is a filming day, filming for YouTube and TikTok, Thursday is filming day for TikTok. It's probably YouTube filming day too, because honestly, I am filming today and I'm gonna upload tomorrow. And this is where we get into my new YouTube upload schedule. So Wednesdays, I'm going to upload a weekly vlog. Fridays, I'll be uploading a recipe video or a main channel video like this, just a main video with like an actual theme and direction and all of that. And then I will be posting my Twitch schedule on Twitch very soon, as soon as that is finalized, but the goal is gonna be Friday nights and Saturday during the day. Those are gonna be my Twitch streaming days. Mostly we play Final Fantasy and Minecraft, sometimes Among Us, but those are, that's about what we play. And then what days I need to be posting on Instagram for like, promos and stuff like that. My next spread is my ideal work day. So this is the absolute ideal of what I would want my work day to be, not what is actually practically happening right now. I need about nine hours of sleep to function. So I worked backwards with getting up at a decent time, what time I would have to go to bed to work out the beginning and the end of my day. And then I added everything I wanted to do in a day. So. I gave myself a two hour morning routine to get up, 
have, I like to have lemon water and coffee and a smoothie. Sometimes I'll do oatmeal or overnight oats or yogurt and fruit, but usually just a smoothie to take my vitamins and plan my day and get ready for the day. I need to write that in there, get ready for a day. And then I have a chunk of work time where I'm either editing or filming depending on the day. And halfway through that, I want to take a little meditation break. Has that actually happened yet? No. Is it going to? Absolutely yes, I'm going to do it. And after that, a workout. I think I'm gonna take off the like exact days of what has to happen when and just kind of go with whatever we wanna do that week because these are actually switched this week. We did cardio Tuesday and Thursday and we did strength on Wednesday and probably strength tomorrow. So I'll probably just put like cardio three times a week, strength two times and we can work that into our week however we feel like works for that week. And then we have lunch right after we work out. I meal prep, so having an hour for lunch is plenty for me to like put lunch together and eat. My partner and I eat lunch together because we're both working from home. And then in the afternoon, I have time for just like the computer work, the emails, social posts, once I get the website set up, blog posts, um, to film any TikToks that I want to film. If it's a filming day, if I didn't get all the TikToks done, honestly, we are in this time period right now because I like I said, I tried to film up here and uh, filming issues. So we're gonna take some time to film doing this and then I'll go do email. My goal is to get through my email today because I have not got to inbox zero since 2020. So that I've got quite a stack and that needs to happen. And then at five o'clock, I wanna wind down and do yoga stretch cause I've been either like sitting in front of the computer all day or just like, I need to get back into doing yoga. I like to be flexible and it makes me feel good. And then six to seven, my partner and I have dinner together. Like I said, I meal prep, so it really doesn't take me much time to throw dinner together. And then we have a couple of hours here where we can just game and stream and watch TV and kind of do whatever. This is like free time. I get to do whatever I want and relax and unwind from the day. Mostly gaming though, because my partner and I are really into Final Fantasy XIV right now. And then from nine to 10, get ready for bed. This is 10 minute clean, clean up the apartment, make sure everything's put away, make sure everything's ready for DJ Roomba, who is actually a shark, to run around in the morning before we wake up without like running into anything or picking anything up. Do my night routine, my skincare, all of that and fill up my bullet journal, my habit tracker, and write my to-do list for the next day. And then I like to read a little bit before I fall asleep. Right now I'm reading a book called Deadly Education. I'm almost done with it. It is pretty good. And then there's a second book, there's a sequel to it. So I wanna read that as well, but I think I'm gonna read Midnight Sun before I read the sequel to Deadly Education. And if you wanna follow me on Goodreads, I will drop that link down below so you can see what I am currently reading. I'm really bad at keeping up with Goodreads, but I wanna get better at it. The next spread I have is cleaning schedule. So this just tells me when different types of cleaning needs to be done. So every day we wanna tidy and we want to have a dish-free sink when we go to bed, just to keep our apartment looking nice. Weekly, of course, laundry, and then just some wiping the counters and cleaning the bathroom. Bi-weekly, we wash the sheets and the towels. Monthly, clean out the fridge and oil the wooden cutting board and wooden spoons, stuff like that to keep them nice. Quarterly, we have to change the air filter and new toothbrush. Very important to switch out your toothbrush quarterly. Bi-annually, we clean the fridge, deep clean the fridge, deep clean the pantry, and do the baseboard. So we, the fridge is gonna be due in February. The pantry we just did last week, and then the baseboards is due, because we have not done that at all since we lived here, so we really need to go around and wipe the baseboards down. That's a really quick, easy thing to do. Well, it's a pretty large apartment, so it, not really quick, but it's a pretty easy thing to do. And then annually, change the fridge filter, which this is due in February. I might add like a little check off on each of these. I might explain, expand the boxes and add like a little check to be like, ah, uh, this happened then, or when was the last time this happened? When's the next time it needs to happen? Like this, 
I feel like might change a little bit, especially with the stuff that's like far apart that we have to remember when the last time we did it or when the next time we need to do it is. The next page is my habit tracker. So I put four months on this habit tracker just because I don't wanna have to draw it every single month. But I think what I might do is erase April, move these three over and then have these instead of written sideways, have them written across because this feels like very squished on the side and I don't like that. And it's hard to read when I am filling this out. I have to like turn it and it's, I just don't, I don't like it. So I think I might be changing that up a little bit, but you know, didn't know until I tried it. Obviously we we're doing okay with our habits, not great, but that's what the point of the habit tracker is, right? To watch the improvement. So my next spread is my weekend routine and my Sunday self-care routine. So I didn't want to do an ideal day for Saturday, Sunday, or Monday just because I want those days to be a little more fluid and I don't really have like a wake up time on Saturday and I don't consider them work days even though I do technically work on Saturday and Monday, but I don't really consider them work days and some, some days I'm filming all three days. So like they're all working, but they're not like official work days. They're a little bit more casual. On Saturdays, I want to post on Instagram a picture from whatever we did on Friday's YouTube video. We wash the laundry and stream on Twitch. I told y'all about that. And then Sunday, farmer's market, self-care shower, plan week, plan meals. So this is just like bullet journal stuff, getting ready for the week. The farmer's market is where we do a lot of our grocery shopping. And then my self-care shower, that is what this whole list is over here. It is 15 steps, it's quite a long list, but that's because I've been doing the Curly Girl Method, so all of this is hair care, this is hair care, and this is hair care. So most of these steps are just hair care steps. And I can do a video showing y'all what I do for the Curly Girl Method, and if y'all remember what my hair looked like at the beginning of 2020 to now, it definitely looks so much healthier and shinier and not as frizzy. It's much nicer and doing the curly girl method has really, really helped my hair. I'm still figuring out exactly what products work for me and how, how to use them, but I can share kind of my journey and what I'm doing and what I was doing to what I am doing now and what's working and what's not. If y'all are interested in that, let me know down in the comments. And then sometimes I like to take a relaxing bath. I might do that while my hair is in the plot or during the week, but mostly it happens Sunday nights. And this is just a list of things that I can add to my bath. I don't have to, so that I can look at this list and really build a very relaxing, nice bath. And I wrote myself a little note down here that says you do not need all of these things to relax. Pick three to five or more if you'd like, but don't stress about adding more. Less is more. So this list is not all encompassing. It's just stuff that I can add to make it more relaxing, but if I don't have the spoons, I don't need to. So my next spread just has a title. It says herbs and what they do. For this spread, I'm going to be using it for and a free herbs class that my friend sent me. I am either going to draw the herb and write about it, or I'm going to upload a picture and write about what that herb does how to identify it, stuff like that, because I'm my friend is an herbalist and a naturopath and I'm trying to learn a little more about natural healing and herbs and what they do. My next page, I have already started filling out and I kind of left the information in here because it's just a video game notes. Um, like I said, we've been playing Final Fantasy XIV a lot and my fisherman in Final Fantasy XIV is actually one of my highest leveled classes slash jobs. And this is some notes that I started taking because I started realizing when I was searching for where to find certain fish that the notes weren't all encompassing. They might tell me where to fish, but they wouldn't tell me what time to fish. They wouldn't tell me the conditions, stuff like that. So they would tell me what bait, but the information wasn't all encompassing. So I started my own log. Uh, that I write down notes as I fish in Final Fantasy so I know what I can catch, with what, at what locations, and then if there's any extra extra information I need, like the full moon sardines can only be caught after midnight, the bl bluebell salmon can only be caught around noon, and the mungfish can only be caught around dusk. 
At least that's, in my experience, what I have figured out. I know this is a, a me thing and that this is not gonna be a common spread, but use your Brilla journal for whatever you need it for. And this is one thing that I needed. The next page is set up just for my Final Fantasy XIV daily list. So there is supply and provisioning missions you can do and you have to craft things or cook things and you have to gather all the things to craft and cook for that. So I will write down my list of like everything I need before I go out into Aorzia and collect what I need and I just erase it at the end of the day because it changes every day anyway. So I just write down what I need that day. My next spread is for TikTok audios. So I save so many TikTok audios and I either forget that I want to do something with them or forget that I need to film like a before before I get ready for the day. And so this is just a place for me to actually go through all of my TikTok audios and write down my ideas to go with them and write down if they need to be filmed before or after something. That way I can actually do those transition videos and stuff like that because I, I forget that I need to film before I get ready to do the transitions and then it just doesn't happen. So this is gonna be for me to keep track of all of those. And then if I find an audio that needs to be filmed before I get ready, I can then go to my daily log and I can be like, film before you get ready on there and I can actually remember to do it. My next spread is monthly spread. So this is for January. I just have the calendar written out and then here is where I can write birthdays, important events, just stuff that's happening throughout the month and then my January goals. So that's kind of how I made this page, kind of two columns. I don't know if I'm gonna do something with the space down here. I kind of left it open so that I could draw another box here if I had like another goal. But for right now, I have one goal in January and that is to get back on track. I, my sleeping schedule got so out of whack through December and through Vlogmas, so it is imperative to me to get back on track. So I write the goal and then I write action steps to reach that goal. So it's kind of a broad goal to say get back on track, but each of my action steps are tangible. They are something that I can actually do. That being be in bed by 10, except on Fridays, because Fridays I get to stay up until midnight. Actually, Saturdays I stay up until 11 also. I should write that in there. Take my vitamins every day. I need to go do that right now. I will do that after I finish filming this part of the video. <laughs> Eat breakfast, because I kind of stopped eating breakfast because I wasn't waking up until like nine or 10 or 11. So there like wasn't any time before lunch, so I stopped eating breakfast, but go back to eating a healthy breakfast. Cause I don't really, I know that you don't have to have breakfast, but breakfast is the only time that I really get fruit in. So I want to eat it so that I can get my fruit in for the day. Choose music more often. So that one's a little more broad. I don't think this is something I've really talked about, but I tend to choose to listen to YouTube videos or listen to podcasts more often than I choose to listen to music. And I could be more productive if I chose to listen to music or it could give my brain a rest, a break if I chose to listen to music more often, but I, I just don't. I like to listen to people talk. I like to listen to books and podcasts and YouTube, but I want to choose music more often to help me focus and help me get more done and help give my brain a rest. Meditate twice a week. So I know that on my habit tracker, it says meditate. It, it lists meditate for every day. And on my ideal work day, it says meditate. But I'm giving myself the tangible goal of meditating twice a week. I feel like that will be, it's a small achievable goal. Similar with yoga. I said I wanted to do yoga every day, but doing yoga once a week for January is a small tangible goal that will lead me hopefully later in the year to doing yoga every day. So if I say yoga once a week this month and I achieve that, then I can say yoga twice a week next month and then achieve that. That way I can build up slowly to doing yoga every day and take walks outside. We kind of stopped taking walks outside once it got really hot last summer and we never really picked it up again. So part of our cardio is actually walking outside. And you might say, well, walking isn't very much cardio. You're a fit person. But our walk is on hiking trails and the hiking trails are super steep. So steep that at some places I have to step up half of my body size. So it actually is a pretty good cardio workout, especially if we're talking the whole time and we are keeping a good pace. The hike around our apartment complex is quite a good cardio workout. For my next spread, this is what my weekly spread is gonna look like, my weekly and daily. I have been trying this out this week and it seems to be working, although I might 
run out of space. I don't know yet. We're gonna have to see how this goes. I like to have a master to-do list for the week. That way I can write stuff down when I remember that I need to do it without assigning it to a day yet. And then I also like to have a place where I can write things for next week because I come up with stuff that needs to happen next week or in the future a lot. Or if this list is getting really long and it's like, oh, I want to do that. And then I realize like, oh, I probably can't do that this week because this is too long. I can put it on next week. And then this is a little box for me to plan my meals for the week. Just like what we're having for lunches and dinners. And then these two columns are what I use for my dailies. So I'll just write Monday up at the top and then whatever I have to do. And then Tuesday, then whatever I have to do. Wednesday, whatever I have to do. And that'll just be these two columns. That way I can look at my this week and I can write down my stuff. Now, what I did find is I had like, I had written Monday. I had written Monday up here. And I had like a list that went down to here and then Tuesday. And so I was like, oh, I've already taken up like this whole side. So I have to be careful with the amount of stuff that I write down on each day to fit on both of these sides, which is good though, because I shouldn't be writing a whole list this long of stuff to do in one day. That's unrealistic. And I shouldn't have to migrate that many tasks over each day. I should be trying to write just the amount that I need to get done or can get done in that day. Try not to overwhelm myself with to-dos. So that is one thing that I, I'm gonna try and use this spread to do. And that is it. I will take this template and just copy paste it to continue making weeks throughout the year. Last year I showed y'all a running weekly and I liked that. The issue that I found with it was because I wasn't writing a to-do list every single day, I would go look at my list and it would be very overwhelming and by the end of the week, there was so much going on, lots of lines and dots and crosses and not all the way crossed out. And there was so many things listed to do and like they didn't actually assign to a day. So I found it very um, overwhelming by the end of a week. So I wanted to try this method where every single night I actually write what the next day is and I write down what my to do's are for that day. That way I can keep it more spaced out to exactly what day each of these things needs to happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed my 2021 bullet journal flip through. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are in the comments, how you guys feel about digital bullet journaling versus paper bullet journaling. And if you would ever try digitally bullet journaling, if I should try paper bullet journaling, you know, it is something I've thought about trying before, but for some reason I can't get myself to waste the paper and try it because digitally is working for me and is working even better now that I have a pencil. But like I said, you don't need a pencil to be able to digitally bullet journal. If you have a stylist, any stylist will work. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me. And hit the like button if you like this video. If you're gonna try any of my spreads, leave me a comment down below what you thought. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for this week's vlog. Bye y'all.